Today, the 3rd of the 7th, 2013, this is the midweek teaching of Jesus the Christ Ministries mission and um, we're going to be looking at uh, Proverbs today. We're going to go to the 13th proverb today. And we're going to look at one verse, the 17th verse in, uh, yes, 17, uh, uh, Proverbs 13, in the, the 7th verse. There is one who makes himself rich yet has nothing. One who makes himself poor yet has great riches. Well, when I first read that I thought of uh, the man Jesus. I thought of how Jesus came from heaven to earth to show the way, emptied himself, as script says, of all divinity and became as a mere man, became as a mere man, walked amongst us, propitiated for our sins and he went through a lot of uh, carry-on Jesus went through quite a lot being born as a child of a woman by Holy Ghost power and uh, the old saying in the world goes there are people so poor that the only thing that they have is money and uh, I don't think you could be any poorer than to just have money. And then we have script that says that uh, uh, it's very difficult for a wealthy man uh, and wealthy woman, rich man and a rich woman, to enter the kingdom. And talks about the eye of a needle and a camel. Um, and when Jesus taught and preached, if you go through the red writing of Jesus, not little red riding hood, but the red writing of Jesus. When you go through what the Lord Jesus uh, said and says, you find he, he really, he ministers on the lines of extreme. He goes from one extreme to the other, you know, all the way in all his proverbs and uh, five foolish virgins five wise virgins you know ten lepers wow only one uh, returned only one stayed on after encountering the power of god i mean that is real power isn't it that's when you're a leper and um and, and your skin is so fragile that you can put your finger through your arm cast out of society and next minute as you're walking down the road no medication or nothing here is there but just as you're walking down the road your skin becomes not like normal the, their skin didn't become as normal their skin became like that of a baby so that's power but yet only one come back the, the other nine were not moved to the place where they were going to serve the Lord with their uttermost and all. They still had reservations for self. They wanted to go back, those nine lepers, back into the society. They wanted to go back uh, to where the humans were. They didn't want to be uh, uh, in the zenith with the Christ. And most people choose that. The scriptures say, Matthew 7, 13, 14, people choose the wide road. Most choose the wide. The narrow road is difficult and no one's going to change that. Talking to a backslidden woman the other day and she said, look, I've got to say one thing about walking with Jesus, it's a difficult road. Well, Jesus told us that, didn't he? He said the road is narrow and difficult. Few be they that take the path. 
But there are people so so poor that the only thing that they have is money. So there is one who makes himself rich, and and you know that takes time, doesn't it? It takes time to make yourself rich. If you're going to make yourself rich, you're going to have to spend time in it. You're going to have to devote your time. You're going to have to focus on that. But those who love the Lord, they're not focused on on the riches of this world. They're not focused on making money. You know, they're focused on the Lord. They they're zeroed in on the Lord. And there's those who make themselves rich, uh, they have nothing of any real value according to God, according to this um, this proverbial saying in this oracle. Uh, they don't really have anything of any weight, you know. So um, the oracles of the Lord are there to make us wise. So we're redeeming our time. We're redeeming our finances. You know, money spent well is spent on someone else. You know what I mean? I'm not saying money spent well is spent on me. I'm saying that that's more of a Hillsong thing, you know. That's more of a Kenneth Copeland, uh, Joyce Meyer, um, you know. It's more of a Pentecostal American thrust. Money spent well is spent on me, you know. Send all your money to me, you know, and buy me a new jet. I need new tyres for me, jet. You know, money spent well is spent on someone else. I'm going to spend on me. No, money spent well is spent on someone else. Um, the Lord tells us to store our goods in heaven where moth cannot eat and 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 fluff cannot gather and, and thief cannot steal. Yeah? So we um, uh, we know that God knows everything. He's, he, he's omniscient. I have heard recently that God is not omnipresent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Church of God International, I'm pretty sure. Um, Brother Eli. And uh, he doesn't believe that because he reads this one scripture that says that God's on the throne. <laughs> you know, how can he be? No. So these are the last days. There's a lot of deception around. There's a lot of angry people. Uh, they're not angry with sin. They're angry with... Uh, their own lives, they, they haven't achieved, they haven't, you know, the Lord, you know, haven't accomplished, they haven't achieved, they haven't succeeded, they haven't got what they want. And the Lord tries, well, endeavours and wants to deliver us from self, doesn't he? He wants to deliver us from all what we want to do. But are we will, willing enough, wise enough to accept that and go on with him? And... Uh, you know, um, lock into the unlimited riches, uncountable. Our message today is called The Poor Rich and the Rich Poor. Hey? The Poor Rich and the Rich Poor. So, there are people so poor that they, the only thing they have is money. They don't have anything else. They might have goods, they might have the things of this world, but the old story of, of the park bench mutation, you know, they're sitting on the park bench in rags and, and a newspaper as a blanket with everyone scoffing, mocking and turning their nose up, but yet saved. A clean heart, filthy clothes, matted hair, but clean heart. And then we have the extreme, we have some uh, drug runner or, 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 you know, some uh, illicit operator, crooked businessman, you know, in the best clothes you can find and uh, with all the Barbie dolls surrounding him and a heart like a coal mine, hell bound. 
but millions of dollars, you know, um, the gangster style person, you know, the squizzy tailor kind of bloke, you know, threatening and harassing people, intimidating people, um, ruining people's lives, but loaded with money and um, heart like a coal mine, hell bound, going to be slain in the presence of Christ and his angels for eternity. If the scriptures read true, mm -hmm. Revelation. So, um, in the presence of Jesus and his angels, they'll be watching on. Hey? The poor rich and the rich poor. Are you a poor rich person or are you a rich poor? How rich are you? Hey? Are you limited or unlimited in your riches? What are your riches? Who are your riches? Will they last forever? Hey? Will your riches last forever? Or will they just fade away and lose value, depreciate? The riches Christ gives us do not depreciate. The riches that the Christ gives us, do, they don't depreciate. They're, they're forever. They're forever uh, eternally valuable to all. So, they're all interesting questions, what I just asked, uh, which provide unusual answers at times. So our scripture we're dealing with today makes it very clear that one uh, who makes himself or herself poor is no doubt the rich one. According to the all-knowing, the omniscient, almighty God of Israel, Jesus the Christ. So, of course, there's many who would zealously disagree. But this servant preaching and teaching here today has always come to find that God is right. Father knows best, doesn't he? Not mother. We, look, mother had a go. She, she had a shot at in, in Eden, didn't she? Mum had a go there. And she just messed it all up. Mum does not know best. Mama Eve had a go and she just wrecked it for every race and every man and woman that ever walked. Just totally wrecked it. But it looked good, didn't it? It looked good. It looked like everything was going to be grand. It, but when once again, we're not the optical people, are we? we're the mathematical people. We're the mathematical geniuses of the universe. We're the children of the Most High God. We calculate through righteous judgment. We add it all up and we know the value of things, not just the price. We have to pay. So, um, to God be the glory that he, he shows us through his oracles that we can afford to be poor. So, the question I want to ask is, are you in that position of power? Yet, the listener today, those listening by the the, the uh, YouTube, um, those listening by disc, are you in that position today? Are you in that position where you can afford to be poor? I hope so, because there's there's a great shock coming to the world real soon and we see the one world church gathering rapidly we've seen a major sign of this in the new re-election the the, the re-election of uh, ministers we see two major um, components that um, take our eyes towards the one world church and the one world government. And that was the parliamentary um, uh, minister 
who laid his hand on the Quran and made an oath mm -hmm. as he as as he was sworn in. Excuse me, as he was sworn in to the Rudd government, and then we seen behind Mr. Rudd and flanking Mr. Rudd. Um, uh, Mama Eves, like never before, we've seen the women taking over. We've seen abundant women in the Labor Party. And we see men bowing out and with their tail between their legs, bowing out. So in that we see the, the One World Church with the Quran being accepted into the government. They're getting a toehold, mm. see? Once upon a time, it was just a constitutional confession in the parliament in the morning, you know, the Our Father sort of thing. So now we might see the glorious Quran being read in parliament too, not too far down the road. So we have the One World Government there, uh, 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 the One World Church there, um, and we have Eve. We have Eve taking rule everywhere, women rising up and men bowing down to Mama Eve, who made the biggest mess you can think of, in, not, not in history, but in existence mm. of the first amoeba, you know. <laughs> it was just a mess, a total mess. It was such a mess, God... Uh, had to um, uh, became become a man to fix it up. That's how bad it was. He couldn't just send an angel mm. to fix it up. Yeah. It was such a big mess. <clears throat> he, he had to come himself. And and that's the mess that women make when they're out of order. That's why. You know, if we, if we want a life of peace and quiet and, and joy and and we want a life of um, uh, uh, salvation, we need to be equally yoked. Otherwise, it's just going to be a living hell. Yeah. Although it looks good, but we're not the optical people, are we? We're the mathematical people. We have a righteous calculation of all things and people. As one man emailed me this morning, Mr. John John P. Ferris, uh, uh, bad mouthing me on an email, and you'll see, I picked the eyes out of this because it's a little bit long to put at the top of our you, uh, our web page, our, our our website. This John P. Ferris, you know, I don't know who he is or who he thinks he is, but bad mouthing me and saying. Uh, all these kinds of things that he has, it's only apparently. Oh, well, is, it, is it or isn't it? Is it or isn't it? Is it yes or no? Or is it apparently I have heard or apparently you're not fit to minister? Apparently. And I don't want apparently. Seems means apparent, but not in reality. Are you listening today? Yes. I want yes or no. Is it or isn't it? Yes. Otherwise, don't open your big trap, Mr. John P. Ferris. Mm. Some nobody sitting down the road there somewhere throwing his ten cents in because he doesn't like what was put in his letterbox or or sent to him. Mm. And he's so brave, he said, and by the way, I, I can stop your email. I can block emails too. I thought, well, there's a man of courage, <laughs> Mr. John P. Ferris. Hey, Mr. John P. Ferrans, ranting and raving, making a mess of things like Mama Eve. If it's the John P. Ferris I'm thinking of, he's over there on North Brisbane with reach out for your money, reach out for your wallet. What's that bloke's name over there? David Patch. Needs to patch up a few things with his John P. Ferrans before he gets himself into trouble. Brisbane Outreach Church or whatever. That was a an offspring of Steve Ryder, who was a bank robber and still is a robber by the sounds of it, charging people thousands of dollars to hear 
false doctrine and laying hands on people and they never get healed. I know that Steve Wright went to lay a hand on me one time at a meeting in Jindalee and there was about as much power there as a tabby cat. I was disgusted. I thought, there's no power there. He tried to push me over. Awesome. Put his hand on my head and tried to push me over. Steve Ryder, the great Steve Ryder. Hey, hearken, hearken. Yay, yay, Steve Ryder. Put his hand on my head and gave me a bit of a shove. And I said, no, I thought to myself, you, you shove me again, I might headbutt you. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> the power of God is here today. The angels are here. You know what I mean? And then you go over to the table and they've got books and brochures and, 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 and CDs and audio with price tags on But the angels are there. And they've got to walk someone around the room twice before they fall down. They exhaust you. <laughs> Come on. The poor rich and the rich poor. Barcodes, price tag, churches. I tell you, they're the rich poor. Yes. They, they are Laodicean. They appear to have everything, but they got nothing. All right? So can you afford to be poor? Look, I would rather be right with the Lord Jesus and ready to go in the upward call than to have all the money in the world and, and, and sitting in some beautiful home with all these superficial friends and hanger honorers. I'd rather be sitting on a park bench with everyone spitting on me any day of the week. And if that come my way, so be it. I'll rejoice. Hey? I'll rejoice in that. So the position that I'm talking about is easy to understand, isn't it, really? I don't minister with the complicated mindset of men and women, degenerated men and women. But Jesus Christ Ministries, Pastor Paul Shem, I minister with the simplicity of the Christ. When we have Jesus... As our Lord and Shepherd, the Word of God says that we shall or will not want anything. You shall not want. You know, when Jesus is Lord, you're not wanting. You're, you're, you're not wanting this and wanting that and I want and I want. You, you have forgotten about yourself. You're concentrating on him and worshipping him. You with me? Mm -hmm. Obeying him, that's worship. Just forget about yourself. Concentrate on him and worship him. Worship him, Jesus Christ our Lord. Worship doing what he says. And then it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter what you have. It doesn't matter if you have no friends. You know, that none of that really matters because the Lord will fill you with him just like you fill a glass with water. Hey? Paul was the drink offering, poured out and filled. Poured out and filled continuously. Paul was not a married man. Paul never had a home with a, a three carport um, arrangement. Paul never had holidays in the Bahamas. Paul never had a, a big old jet airliner. He never had any of that. He wore the clothes of the poor. He had nowhere to lay his hand. He was searching for bread and water. But he was full, like Stephen. Full. Full. But, it said, but Stephen was, but he was full. Full of the Holy Ghost and power. He wasn't saying, oh, why are they stoning me? Why, why me? You know, he was saying, forgive them, Father. If they only knew what they were doing. They're take, trying to take out one of yours. Mm. Jesus said, you touch one of my little ones, it's best to put a millstone around your neck. Amen? Amen? So, let us cling to the old rugged cross. Let us cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday 
for our crown. If we cling to the old rugged cross, if we pick up our cross and follow the Lord, we got something to exchange, haven't we? For we, we, we'll have, we know we can have a crown if we have a cross. There's no cross, uh, uh, there's no crown without a cross. And unless we're prepared to suffer with him, we cannot live with him. We cannot be with him. We must suffer with him. Hey? Even like Mr. J.P. Ferris. John John P. Ferris, even his rubbish talk this morning, first thing when I got onto my email, this rubbish talk, look, I feel sorry for him because he, he's revealed his heart mm. in, in his abusive, mm. carry-on, demeaning talk. That That's his heart. He's got a bitter, demeaning heart. If he was a man of God and a man of love, John, John P. Ferris, he would have felt sorry for me if I was that kind of person. And, and he would have prayed for me. And, and he would have rang me up and said, Paul, can we go and have a coffee? I, I, I really want to talk with you and help you. But there's never been a minister. There's never been a minister in the 26 years that I've ministered that has rung me or come to me and said, Paul, you, you're such a bad man, you know. And you talk rubbish. You got all the scriptures skew with, and I want to. I want to go with you, and, 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 and I, I want you and me, because I I love God, and because I love you, and because you're off the track. You're 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 straying. I want to. I want to go aside with you, me and you. Let's go to the north coast, and, and let's book into a hotel. And, and let's fellowship together, me and you, and I want to show you where you're wrong. I want to show you, me and you, lovingly. I've never had a minister ring me and want to talk with me personally, confidentially, and show me where I'm wrong and show me lovingly and, and care for me. Not, not one in 26 years. So that tells me something about these so-called ministers of love. They got it. They got Look, the love, they wouldn't have a clue what love is. They got no idea what love is. Not one of them. All, all, all they do is throw their bags of mud and, 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 and talk rubbish. All the parents. It's not yes or no, it's apparently. Well, apparently. That's the world. That's the world. That, 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 that's a, 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 a rich, poor man. That's not a poor rich man. That's a rich poor man. That's these religious mob that have their buildings and blocks of land and, and they have all their, their Bible colleges and they're charging their brothers and sisters money to learn false doctrine. They're, they're all the rich poor. Hillsong and Hellsong, rich poor. Steve Ryder, rich poor. Yes. You know, all these deceitful people, Cole Springer, Rich Paul, Danny Nullia, Rich Paul, you know, Jimmy Swaggart, Rich Paul, uh, Donnie Swaggart, Rich Paul, these are all Rich Paul, Benny Hinn, Rich Paul, Joyce Meyer, Rich Paul, Joel Osteen, yes. Rich Paul, you know, um, you've got the um, Pat Robertson and the 500 Club, Rich Paul, they, these are all Rich Paul with their false, misleading, uh, heartless doctrines, robbing people, yes, you know, yes. Pastor uh, Chris Okolomi, Rich Paul, you know, um, all these pretend apostles around the place, look, they wouldn't make apostles boot loans, you know, <laughs> and, right. and uh, Rich Paul, yes. uh, loaded with money, living in, 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 in luxury houses and homes, with twenty million dollars or more. Look, I'm probably you know, living in a cave. Twenty million dollars is peanuts for a home today. You look at more at two hundred million, you know. And uh, rich poor, you know, um, they will come on that day and they will say, Lord, Lord Jesus, say, look, you better go away from me. And they'll start claiming what they did. And he say, look, you, this may be so, but I don't want to know you. You, you, you're a lover of sin. 
You don't love me at all. You love yourself. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. It's like the Paula Whites and, the, and Benny Hinn's holding hands romantically in 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 uh, Italy, you know, an evening in Aroma, you know. And um, then they turn around and say, oh, we're just buddies. Well, where was Benny Hinn's wife at the time? And they're holding hands, smiling at each other, going through the streets of Rome or whatever it was. Come on. I mean, it's a cop-out, you know. you got Donnie Swaggart marrying this one and Donnie Swaggart marrying that one. <laughs> you got Jimmy Swaggart down at the massage parlour. And <laughs> they're all, you know, you've got some bloke, he reckons he went to heaven and... and, 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 and uh, He's homosexual or something, and then you got another another bloke closer to the home at, at Christian Life Center, uh, Brian Houston's dad uh, having sex with some young bloke, and the church is growing. Come on, you got homosexual priests, lesbian nuns, you you've got all this going on, you know. You, you you've got uh, Katy Perry who's confessed lesbian. And and her parents are supposedly Christian. Well, they're American. I call them American Christians, and they think, oh well, you know, it's all right to go along with this. She's still our daughter. And then you got, you know, going into the political arena. You, you, you've got um, uh, what's his name, the opposition leader in the Australian Parliament. What's his name? Um, Tony, Abbott. Tony Abbott, Mr. Abbott. Uh, uh, a man who was going to be a Roman Catholic priest and his sister's lesbian and he says he has a change of mind now and he wants to be more liberal and, uh, well, they are the liberals. And, and you know, he's, the, the um, daughter said, well, we'll get on. You know, they were interviewing the daughter and they said, well, will Tony come to your wedding, you know? And she said, oh, I reckon he will, you know, in the end. He'll come along. Well, that's as good as saying, you know, putting your stamp on it, isn't it? And blah, blah, blah. And the story goes on and on and on. And it never ends. But people don't want to talk about it because they're the rich poor. If it was, if, if it was a, a poor rich bloke, they'd be hammering him uh, through the wall. Hey? If it was someone without any notoriety amongst the sinners, you know, and, and has some fellowship that's considered uh, by sinners as a cult and they, they say they're losers and they're going nowhere. Well, why bother about Paul Sheen if he's a loser going nowhere and he's a cult? That's just to let him be, isn't it? Or the other side of the coin is try and help him. Hey? And neither of, it, neither of it's happening. Hey? Neither of it's happening. So there's a big question mark over the whole lot, isn't there? Hey? There's one who makes himself rich, yet has nothing. I mean, even the rich men in the world, they give millions of dollars away, tens of millions, the Bill Gates type person, and many of them give millions of dollars away, but that aren't going to save their soul from the fires of hell. We can give all the money away, they're still poor. They're the rich poor. Everyone is poor. I told the poor in the Philippines, I said, you can be the, the, the poor rich. I said, you can be infinitely rich. And people look at you and think you're just some uh, loser on your way to hell. But they're the ones on their way to hell because their heart's filthy with sin. The rich are the clean hearted. The rich are the pure hearted. Mm. The rich are the humble. The rich are those who have the truth and speak the truth. Right? They live the truth. The rich are, uh, are the honest. I mean, all these businesses around the place... How do you think they become wealthy? You think they become wealthy because they're honest? Oh, come on. Come on. Wake up, Australia. Who do you think you're talking to? Right? They think people are totally dumb like them. Come on. Right? We've got the Pope. Uh, uh, Sister Irene was saying the other day that the Pope is, is known as Jesus Punt or whatever, you know? Or, what, what do you call it? The Pope is known as King. He's a king. All popes were known as kings of their domain. Come on. They're just trying to play Christ. 
You know, he was the head of the church and king. No, no, that no pope will ever be king uh, 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 of of uh, kings, and no pope will ever be head of the church of the Christ. <coughs> Amen. So where the kings and the priests, those true believers, are kings and priests unto God, those who obey the Lord, those who obey the Lord, those who do what the Lord says, they are kings and priests. If we cling to the old rugged cross, we cling to the doctrine of the Christ, we do what the Lord Jesus says, there's coming a day when he will say, come forward, my true and faithful servant and crown of life, have ye won? Amen. Amen. So, I mean, I continuously doubt people, whether they're ministers or pew warmers or self-proclaimed spiritual mentors who teach and preach and promote the world's goods and coins as a sign of God's hand upon an individual. I mean, I got me doubts about these church leaders that, that they preach that that's how you know God is with that man. He's got money. You know what I mean? That's how you know God's with that man. There's a lot in his church. There's a lot of people in his church. What sort of people are they? That's what I want to know. What sort of people are in that church? Hey? What sort of people are in that church? That's the big question. What's the message of that church? If you know the message of the church, of the local church, then you'll know why that will that will give you the true calculation of why that many people are there. <laughs> if you got a true bona fide uh, knife edge message in that local church, the people will be few because few take the narrow gate. If you got a message in that church that makes way and compromises and and, and, and and makes allowances for all kinds of carry-on uh, forward slash sin, the number of people in that church will be will be great because wide is the gain. If you got a wide doctrine, you know, and and, and the um, a, a, a variance, great variance. There'll be a lot of people in that church. How do I know that? Well, you look at the Roman Catholic Church. I mean, if that's not a crooked business, I don't know what it is. It's a crooked business. They're tied up with money laundering. Hundreds of millions of dollars have just been caught out. One bloke trying to launder money into the Vatican. They're tied up with the mafia. There's all kind of perversion, you know, not just sexual abuse, but torture. Tied up with these big organisations, the Anglicans. There's voodoo tied up with the Anglicans mm -hmm. and, and, and the royals. And then you've got the Salvation Army, not just raping children and abusing children, but torturing children. Hey, come on. And um, then you got the Uniting Church with their homosexuals, accepting homosexual priests and lesbian priests, and women marrying women. And it's all part of the one world gathering, isn't it? And if you don't go along with it, well, they're going to endeavour to make your life a living hell till you do. <laughs> so I'm all geared up. I've been training for 26 years for this. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. You might have trained for five years and, and, and then backed off and went back to flab. But I've been training for 26 years. I'm ready to fight any devil in hell in the name of Jesus. I, 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 I'm a lean, mean fighting machine in the Christ. I don't look much in the natural, but in the spiritual, bring it on. Bring it on, you know. Uh, Apollyon or whoever they call them. <laughs> bring it on in the name of Jesus. I don't care who the demon is. I don't care who the church is. 
I don't care who the government, bring it on because a man who's ready to die today has no bother about what anyone's going to do to him. <laughs> I don't count this life anything. Paul said, this life is nothing to me. Hello? Hello? He said, I'm not one to live on in this life. He said, I did not count my life dear to me. If you've got some attraction to this life and some, some uh, 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 um, connection, you're in trouble. You are, I'm telling you now. I'm telling everyone that listens to this message, you're in big trouble. So you want to cut the ties to this world and the flesh and the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of this life and trying to become someone in this life. I oh, know that people won't like this message, especially the John P. Farrisons of North Brisbane. Hey, he sit in their office and twiddle their little pen, count their money, shovel out second-hand food to people who don't want to repent. Come on. Look, if I had a building with, with all the second-hand food, boxes of it, I'd have people slap me on the back and kissing me on the cheek like Judas. I'd have people lined up at the doors too. Any brown dog can have a warehouse full of food. You'll have every loser and every sinful person in town rolling up for their handout. But that doesn't mean they're going to follow Jesus. Hey? God, God said he, he'd take people of the earth, no matter whether they're in a building with a cross on it or they're not, and he'll use them to feed hungry people and everything else. doesn't mean they're saved. Mm -hmm. It hey? doesn't mean they're saved because they feed someone. Look what the Lord done to Pharaoh. Was he saved? He fed Moses. He, he's one of the greatest prophets that ever uh, drew breath. He fed Moses and his mother, raised Moses up, clothed him, put rings on his fingers and bells on his toes. And then he used the same man to turn around and go to Pharaoh and say, you don't repent, you're coming down. What? How dare you? I was the one that fed you. I was the one that clothed you. If you don't repent and turn, you're coming down, Pharaoh. You got the message? <laughs> That's my God. That's my God. That's my God. That's my Savior. Not that's my team. That's my that's my God. That's my Jesus. The great I am. That's that that's who I love to promote. I don't promote Madiba. I don't promote some black fella in Africa. I don't promote Mandela. Barack Obama is so small in the mind. His hero is Madiba. His hero is uh, Mandela, who stayed in a room for 19 years and everyone thinks he's God. Hogwash. I know plenty of prisoners. When I went to prison uh, for riding motorcycles drunk all the time, I was so drunk I couldn't even kick me Harley over. And they rang the cops, I ended up in jail. I seen blokes in jail and they're doing three times the sentence of what he was doing. One bloke was in there because he killed his wife. He strangled her at the kitchen table because she wouldn't make him a cup of tea. He just done his pills. He had enough. I don't justify that, but that's what happened. He said, oh, well... That's the way it goes. I'm paying the time. He got 40 years or something, or 30 years. Now they're jumping up and down about Mandela doing 19 years. That's only beginner's stuff. It's some of these blokes you see out here, can you say amen? Mm -hmm. hey? And they all worship him. He say, and Barack Obama says, he's my hero. He ain't, look, he ain't my hero. Jesus is my hero, and I make it clear every day on paper. I go out in the streets with, with my signs, repent and be forgiven, Jesus the Christ. He's the one, Jesus the Christ, saying repent. Amen? Yes. He's the one saying it. 
He, he said in bygone days, he put up with the rubbish and he put up with sinners. But he said, no long, no more, repent or perish. I'll destroy you. Acts 3.23, if you don't listen to the great prophet Jesus the Christ, God Almighty, he'll destroy you utterly. Come on now. You're not going to belt your one in the eye. He's going to destroy you utterly. That's an eternal destruction. Right? So we're, we're, we're the poor rich. The true saints and the true body of Christ is the poor rich, not the rich poor. They're all sucking up to people who can only live 60, 80 years, 90 years, and they die and they go to a grave and their soul goes to hell for eternity. Come on. It's time to wake up. They're living in a fairyland. The devil's lulled the world to sleep with his lies, his subtle lies. Hey? All these subtle lies with Mama Eve trying to rule the roost in the last time, in the last days. Hey? Where's all this? I, I, I find it hard to get my head around church leaders always talking about money and, and, and this world and building a, a house and the great Australian dream. Great Australian dream? Building a, a shed with rooms in it. Great Australian dream. Man, you don't dream very big. They reckon think big. I'm, I'm thinking heaven, mate. <laughs> I'm thinking another planet. I'm not thinking... Oh, think big. I'm going to build a building that's 20 stories high. Man, that's on a scale to what I think. That's peanuts. That That's just hogwash. Hey? Think big. Oh, look, think big. I'm talking mansions in heaven. I'm talking streets of gold. That's how big I'm thinking. Hey? I'm talking, I'm talking gates made out of one pearl. I'm talking eternity. I'm talking uh, uh, no dust, not one speck of dust in heaven. I'm, I'm talking no, not one filthy word. I'm talking uh, 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 no, not one toilet. I, I, I'm talking you won't need that guy. I'm talking immortality. I'm talking uh, immortal um, bodies. I'm not talking some crummy uh, uh, shed on the north shore of Sydney. With a few blocks of gold in the bank. Oh, go away. That doesn't interest me. I want some big stuff. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm greedy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can steal your materials to build your house or cheat some builder and then turn around and say, Oh, you know, you owe me another four and a half thousand for the driveway. I didn't know it was going to cost so much and we had to put in a retaining wall. You need to owe me another 5000 and go out and drive your body into the ground to get that. And then one wind comes and uproots the lot and puts it in the neighbour's yard. <laughs> you can have it, hallelujah. You can have it. All around is sinking sand. But on Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a helper, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. I've fixed it up with Jesus. I've sorted it out with Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey? Oh, Sure sign of ignorance and shallow thinking. Small-minded people, when people esteem anything of this world as being instrumental in making for true happiness or salvation of the soul. Long before I became a part of Yahweh's family and one of his servants, I used to stand in awe at pictures and movies and writings about men like Moses and Jesus and Paul. I'm talking about the image they portrayed as real men. Real men. Men without accessories. Men without the world's comfort. Men without the bondage of sin. 
men that could stand and look the evil world and the God of this world, Satan, the devil in the face, and say no. <laughs> Defeat the devil. Hey? I used to think, these men, I think to myself, these men don't, uh, don't have all the garbage and rubbish that these department stores and churches talk about. Hey? They don't have it. These men are, uh, they're not restricted by gold and silver and appetite and, and the acceptance of men and women. Nor are they led around by the nose by people who haven't a clue about what they're talking about. Non-spiritual men, carnal church leaders, carnal Bible deans, carnal uh, 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 so-called prophets. Hey? The John uh, uh, John P. Ferrisons of the world. Hey? The David Patches of the world. The Steve Riders of the world. The Benny Hinds and the Benny Hindrances and the Joycey Meyer and the Myrie Clay Ministers. Hey? I'm not impressed by that rubbish. I'm not impressed by that rubbish. Hey? I consider myself honoured that Jesus would even want to know me. Yes. Well, look at John P. Ferris. He doesn't. Mm. Hey? Would Benny Hinn want to, want to know me? Yes. Joyce Meyer, she hadn't rung me this morning. Hey? Billy Graham? France, Francis Graham and the Talking Mules? They haven't rung me this morning. They wouldn't want to know me. I've been told time and time again, the Assemblies of Gods and the Hell Songs and Brian Houston, none of them want to know me. I've been told by Street Church Adelaide and and uh, Sam Corny Loom and, and, and Caleb Corny Loom, they don't want to know me. I'm just this bad news person. I'm the only one, I, I think I'm the only one with the truth, they say. I've never said that in one sentence. I've never said it. I've done thousands of messages on audio, never said it once. But I have said that I am one and part of the Holy Remnant. Yes. And I have said there are other churches with the truth yes. and there's other ministers, but they're very rare. See these lion tongue things? Huh? Mm. But Jesus, he wants to know me. He called me, he anointed me, and he appointed me, and no man will stop it. And no woman will stop it. And no government will stop it. They're just not big enough. Hey? No religion can stop me. There's only one thing that can stop me, and that's death, and that won't even happen until Jesus gives the nod. Because if God wills, I will live tomorrow. And if God won't, I won't live tomorrow. <laughs> He's El Shaddai, the God of plenty. Hey, He's more than enough. He's more than enough. He's more than enough. He's El Shaddai, the God of plenty, the all-sufficient one, God Almighty. He, he, he. Now get it right. Jesus is more than enough. Him alone. Not Jesus plus buildings, Jesus plus um, mega congregations, Jesus plus the acceptance of degenerated humans. No, he is more than enough. He's El Shaddai, the God of plenty, the all-sufficient one, God Almighty. He, he is more than enough. He's more than anything I need. Jesus is more than anything. You can have enough, but he's more. He's more than I need. I, I'm not looking for friends. I'm not looking for people to to come and sit in in my building that I lease. No, 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 no. I, I'm not looking for that. I'm not looking for that. 
I'm looking for his coming. <laughs> I'm looking for his coming. Hey? I'm not I'm not looking for anything. I I have it all in him. In him I am complete. The author and the finisher, the head of the church, the author and the finisher. It's all in him. In in him I live and move and have my being. Hey? All the lies of, of, of my adversaries yeah. and the filthy uh, yeah. a, a, a apparent, their filthy uh, uh, accusations and and their um, substantiations uh, are not there. All their filthy accusations. The devil is an accuser, but Christ is a substantiator. Yeah. The devil is an accuser. But Christ is the substantiator. So what they say has no substance. It's only accusation. That's how you know it comes from the devil. If it's an accusation, right, without substantiation, yes. it's from the devil. So it, it needs to be substantiated. And 99.9 .9 recurring of what the, 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 the lost church leaders and, and secretaries and, and, and food hander out or say about mm. Pastor Paul Sheehan is only accusation. There's no substance to it. They're not man enough to come to my face mm. and say it to me. They hide behind alias names. They hide behind websites. Mm. They hide behind uh, 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 emails and they always let me know I will be very quick to send a failure notice. I'll cut you off. I'll block your emails. If they speak too much truth, I'll block your emails. I will. Oh, you big courageous thing, you. <laughs> hey? That's the, he has the courage of a cat, not a lion. Hey? But the righteous are as bold as lions. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. So this is a message today. From the the poor rich pastor, Pastor Paul Sheehan of Jesus the Christ Ministries Vision, Brisbane and the surrounding regions and going out to the world. God bless you all. Bye. Everybody said? Amen. Amen.